Welcome back again everybody. Uh, today is a busy day. So we just finished up our boxing video on the Gibson 120P 1962. While we were doing that, I had mentioned there was other guitars in the cart. Um, this was one of them and there still are more guitars in the cart but this one had sold while we were doing the boxing video of the 120P. So what we have here is a 2017 Gibson Les Paul Tribute. This is the gold top. Uh, the gold tops are more sought after uh, and they're harder to get. They made a whole lot more of the honey burst uh, and other colors like that. They're less desirable and they're in abundance. Uh, so anyways, this is a 2017 and this one has the PCV board in it. I did a video of the cleanup on this and I showed the back of the pickups. It has the 490R, 490P pickups in it. it has the lightweight aluminum piece, uh, tail and bridge on here. Uh, your standard switchcraft uh, switch here and your strap buttons. Basic uh, Clouson Deluxe single ring vintage tuners. It has a 12 inch radius um, with the trapezoid uh, inlays on the fretboard. I'm pretty sure that the fretboard is rosewood. Let me look. Of course, you know, it's got the maple top, maple, or uh, mahogany back, one piece uh, mahogany neck. Uh, 12 inch radius on the fretboard. Trapezoid inlays, I said that. The nut is 1.69 on the nut width. Uh, the headstock angle 17 degrees. Huh. So they'll make it real easy to find the uh, information. 490R, 490P, da da da. Covers are nickel. Yeah, oh well. Um, so, anyways, there's a video of me taking this apart and Taking a gander inside, cleaning it up, polishing it. So I really like uh, these Les Paul tributes, especially the gold top. I had one before. This is my second one. Um, and I'd sold the first one with a hard shell case uh, for $14.50. And it had about the same amount of defects as this one, only this one just has them in different spots. like. This one has a little dent right here on the edge. My other one had an itty bitty tiny ding right here. You can only see it if you're looking that way. And then, you know, the little dings here around the edge. It had the same thing, the same amount of dings, just in different spots. So it was in the same condition as this. Um, it did not have the strap block swirl on it. Um, and there's a couple of deeper scratches in this one. So. I let this one go for $13.50 and I did upgrade the case on this one. So let's see. Originally it came with this cheap gig bag, which is nicer than most cheap gig bags. So we'll just leave it at that. I'm going to use this for uh Another guitar we're going to do a review on Steve Stevens uh, guitar. So I'm going to use that for the Steve Stevens guitar. I bought this off of Stratosphere. Uh, I think it was like $69 uh, with $35 shipping. So that makes this a really good deal because it's brand spanking new. Um, has the uh, shoulder strap. You can switch it to either side. It's actually really nice so when you're getting ready to go somewhere with it. I'd rather actually carry this than a hard case. And uh, I'll probably end up buying a, a few more of these from Stratosphere uh, because they're really nice cases. And I'm actually pretty impressed with it. I mean, they're built, the construction on it's built really good. For storage purposes, I like the hard shell cases. I don't know if it makes a difference or not, but it is extremely plush 
new pick inside. And uh, this rest here is adjustable, so you could move it a little bit up and down. It's Velcroed in, and it's nice and secure. And this will hold your guitar in nice and secure. So yeah, it's a. Uh, definitely worth the uh, 70 bucks for shipping and I like the embroidery in it uh, you can't get that on a hard case so I mean that's a plus so in the video that I did of cleaning this up uh, we put the elixir string on it and I'm just going to go over everything here this is more of a protect me this boxing video so a uh, customer can see what condition it was in when it got packaged uh, how it got packaged uh, what was with it when it got packaged so if you're watching this uh, this part might be boring because we're just gonna package it but uh, I will talk about as much as I can uh, as I do this process so anyway strap never used so on the package Truss rod wrench and the Allen key to adjust the bridge is in here. Brand new. Gibson wifey cloth, polished cloth. This is what you would consider the COA for a Gibson USA. It's not going to have a book like uh, the custom shops and stuff do. Um, so you're just going to have the checklist and the serial number that matches the back of your headstock, obviously. Uh, here is the, oop, the owner's manual. Pretty good catch, huh? And the birth picture. Kind of, yeah. Thought it looked like a left handed one there for a minute, is this way I was looking at it. So, and the warranty card. And the warranty card has not been filled out. So, all that original case candy is all still with it. Brand new, never open. Um, so the guy that bought this, is, I, I love when I get a guitar and it has all this stuff. Um, there's been a couple guitars that I bought in the past that didn't have everything. And I went out of my way to make sure that I got every single piece that goes with it. And that's what I do um, if it's missing the wifey cloth or whatever. I try to put them... And get them back into the, the case with it and make it as original as possible because that's the way I like it. Um, I have yet to uh, change a guitar from factory specs, and that's why we're working on that uh, Cherry Burst project. So, anyways, without any further ado, I have to get this packaged up. And I will rattle on and on and on about guitar stuff. <laughs> This being a soft case, there isn't too much you can do about taking up space to jostle because it's soft. It's gonna, it's gonna jostle. So I did forget to detune it, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now.
Alright, that's better. I haven't forgot to detune one yet, but I haven't been doing videos while I've been packing things up either, so I have to be a little more vigilant and careful. Um, so I think that'll work as far as that thing goes there. <laughs> This is something I normally do with the hard shell cases, uh, basically to keep the case from being chafed and having the finish rubbed off. So I imagine, even though this is a soft case, you can probably mess the finish up uh, on that. I have a very bad mouth, so I'm trying to not cuss. <laughs> I was about to say I'd do something and do something else to it. So when I pack things up, I package them up the way that I would expect them to be packaged. <laughs> I'm pretty anal about all my stuff, so uh, I try to take care of it or do the best I can no matter what it is that I'm doing. I'm not saying I am the best, but I want to try my best when it comes to packaging up something somebody spent their hard-earned money on. I know money comes a lot harder than it goes. And when you're going to spend your money with me and buy something, I don't want you to get something that you're not wanting or disappointed with. And I don't want it to show up broken. So I do what I can to make sure it gets there safely. Like this customer here, I will have to remind him about the cold weather and everything. Uh, the Gibson 120T that we just packaged up, I had told him about the $8,000 Gibson Custom Shop that we just sent to Myrtle Beach. And how it got cracked, the finish got all checked on the top. Now that was due to probably the airplane ride. I was against it. I even told the guy that's probably what was going to happen if he put it in an airplane. But right now it's like two degrees outside anyhow. So either way, when it's cold out, you have to make sure that when you bring your guitar in you leave it in the box and let it set for two three four hours the longer the better don't be impatient and then take it out of the box and leave it like this for an hour or so and then peel this stuff off and you know wait another couple hours just let it acclimate and warm up from the because it's got to warm up on the inside um this one when it came from Myrtle Beach this was part of the custom shop trade it was so cold even after hours of sitting here and acclimating um, and it did actually that one some of the pre-existing finish checks got a little worse that's okay it's a 76 it's supposed to look like that okay so there's our first wrapping, I guess you could call it. Now I gotta get it in a box. I gotta do a little repair work on this one.
this is the box that my 76 came in from Myrtle Beach. And it got a little hole poked in it. Stock was here and it had the, the voids on each side. Luckily, that's there you go. Luckily, that's where it got poked and it didn't hurt the guitar. And that's the kind of stuff that can happen. Luckily, I haven't had anything that was damaged. Um, I mean, obviously, this box was damaged, but the guitar itself and the case was not damaged. So I've been lucky so far to not have uh, anything show up DOA or in bad shape. And if I, if I got a guitar in bad shape, it was because I willingly bought it in bad shape. Uh, I've been pretty lucky, pretty fortunate. All right, so that had a little tear there on the cardboard, so I got that backed up. So now we gotta get some uh, foam down in the bottom of this box, get that down in here, and when I pack in around this, I try to get a layer on either side, front and back, and I try to pack down in beyond this to keep it centered and to keep a cushion on each side so it's not leaning against one side or the other or back of the box or front of the box. I like to try to keep it centered. Uh, it's, that's the best thing you can do and it's the only thing you can do to try to prevent them from screwing it up. That's the other thing too. I always like to remember where the relationship of the front of the guitar is because I always try to put the shipping label at the top front. That way they're always wanting to set it like if you were holding the, the case and you were setting it down or moving it or whatever. You don't want it to be thrown on its face um, because if you pack it and you don't know which side it is, now, there's no guarantee that they're not going to throw it on its face. Uh, but if the, the shipping label's on its face, they're more apt to make sure it's on its back to read the shipping label. Because if it's on its face um, and it takes a hard enough whack, it's going to hit your bridge or your tailpiece or your pickup or it's going to smash your strings into your frets. I mean, there's all kinds of things that can happen. It can get broken and dented and... It just goes on and on, but always, if you're going to ship, just make sure you know where the relationship of the front of your guitar is. Obviously, you're going to know where the bottom is because it's heavier. So that's nice. After that little layer of padding down in the bottom, we're going to just enough here to make sure we have a, a layer on the top to protect the top of the headstock as well. So now for this part take up all the voids in here and to keep it strong so it doesn't move a lot because foam is going to really smush. I like to use, it's going to be noisy so I'll try to talk and then, you know, I like to use this paper because it's still giving but yet it's more solid I guess you could say than foam because when you get that balled up it is what it is. Foam will keep squishing and then it'll move around and stuff. I like to try to fill voids up with this, especially when you're shipping with soft cases. If you have hard cases and whatever, you can just fill it with bubble wrap and pillows. And, uh, the air pillows. But when you're shipping a, a soft case, you really want it to stay in the center um, and you want to keep them voids nice and even all the way around. See? Now 
just for me putting that packing in right here on each side. Made it to where it's already nice and stable. And I haven't even gone around it or filled it right up yet. So it's real important. You don't want a sloppy guitar in there. pregnant but I'd have it rather have it a little fat than uh, vulnerable so let me uh, finish this up here get my old label off of it you always, always make sure all your old labels are off them not not just to protect yourself from giving out information you don't want but just to not confuse the postal workers, UPS, FedEx. And always make sure you have lots of fragiles on. Um, just out of habit. I've already taken the 120T upstairs, but uh, I take these on it too. Uh, redundance. Uh, over and over, just making sure people know, hey, this is fragile, handle with care. Please don't throw it. It doesn't guarantee that they're not gonna throw it. Or say, ha ha ha, look it, it says fragile all over, let's throw it. I mean, there, there's only so much you can do in this world to stop people from being people. Um, <laughs> but you gotta attempt to at least get some of them to be honest. And so far, like I've said, I've never had anything uh, show up broken yet. But you see, I did get a 1976 Les Paul Custom with a big hole in it. So it happens, but uh, you just gotta hope and pray for the best. That's all you can do. That's what insurance is for. Everything that I get, I always buy all my labels through Reverb or eBay, and I buy the maximum amount of insurance coverage, whatever I get for it, even 90% of the time, I shouldn't say even if, 90% of the time, it always costs me more money than I charge for the shipping. Like, I'll charge $65 for the shipping, uh, and I charge the same for the 120T. 120T, I think, ended up costing me almost $100 um, to ship it. But that was because of the, the insurance and the signature and you know the, all that stuff adds up so uh i just usually charge 65 bucks and then i eat the rest it's just the way it goes and then like sh shipping materials this stuff is very expensive you go through tons of it so you got to kind of account in for that too so I always try to save as much shipping materials as I can so I don't have to buy a ton of it but obviously you got to buy stuff at some point This eBay tape, it sticks good, but it's, it's really thin. 
So you gotta use a lot of it. So if you if you buy it, you can get like 36 rolls of it, pretty cheap. And it's, when I say cheap, it's still expensive. If you look up eBay, tape, you, you'll see. But um, compared to using uh, the clear duct tape, which is what I used to do all the time, that gets real expensive. So. I complain about this stuff that you got to use like three times as much of it, but you can buy three times as much of this as you can this. So I use this for labels, um, and also if I have really nice factory packaging, like I've sent out some Gibsons and Fender stuff, I put it back in the factory packaging and I tape it with the clear tape because, again, I like things to have everything that originally went with it the, the package if possible and you know all of its case candies or paperwork whatever it is if it came with it originally I like to try to keep it original because the next person like me might appreciate that and I collect things um, so somebody that does collect a guitar I think they're going to appreciate the efforts that I go through to make sure they have this much as the original stuff as possible. Um, like this 76. I'm not going to sell this. Uh, I'm a 1976 and I just traded a very expensive custom shop uh, for this and the guy gave me quite a few grand um, in trade for my gold top but this is all original except for the pickups. Now he did send me the pickups and I pulled the covers off and they are the original t-tops so I will put those back in here and this will be all back to original now these are uh, the Marvio super distortions I'll probably sell those um, so there's other videos on that and there'll be more to come on it So again, I just I like to overdo it on the tape. The way I see it, because even with insurance and stuff, tape's cheaper than the headaches. And the other thing I like to do too is if, if, like right here, there was just a little like crease that looked like it could have been a start of a cut or something. If I find any kind of damage like that on the box, like this little cut right here, I'm going to take a piece of tape and I'm going to put on it. Let it go. Right here. See, even though it was hard for me to find again, I put a piece of tape on it. Because that way when the customer gets it, they don't think, oh man, this thing's just been through hell and back because it's got a hole here or a big scrape there. They can actually see, uh, that was shipped like that, you know, so there's no worry that it got hit there and, oh my god, my guitar might be damaged because of that. But no, I put that as the indicator, it was there before it left. So, if you ever get a package from me and you see little pieces of eBay tape all over, that's why. Um, I'm just indicating the box was had a little damage there and I'm, I'm pointing out that it's nothing that you need to be concerned about. So... Just figured I'd throw that out there. So this is the other thing I like to do. Again, keep the fragile up here towards the top, and then I'll put the shipping label right here. Gotta remember where you leave this. Like, 
front of the guitar in there. Chances are it would probably make it if you put it in there upside down, but I would rather just make sure it's in like this because now if it's going down conveyor belt, shipping labels here, the guitar is laying on its back just like we had it here on the table. So once we leave it or leave it at the post office, it's in their hands. There isn't much else you can do, but just like this. this thing has got enough fragile stickers on it to set off red flags so that's all you can do I'm going to go ahead and reinforce the bottom some more too again redundancy overdo it Check, double check, check, triple check. The bottom of this one looks like it tastes really good. So we're just gonna go over it anyhow a few more times. Perfect timing. So there you have it. I'm going to slap my shipping label on here and that will go out with the 120T today. I did not look to see where this one was going. Normally I will tell you where it's going. So let's see. Where is this going? Let me click on it. I don't want to cancel the order. Well, you bounce around back and forth from eBay and Reverb. You get lost to where things are. Well, it says it's waiting for payment. So it must not want to give me the shipping information until the payment is cleared. The guy sent me a screenshot that said his bank was having problems, and I'm like, oh, here we go. I'm one of these guys, but uh, he sent me a screenshot, and it actually showed where it said, sorry, we're having a problem with uh, processing your request at this time. So he says, I got to call my bank tomorrow. I'm like, oh, no problem. But I figured I'd get it packaged up now. Um, more order actions. Please wait to ship until payment clears. All right, well, I don't know where this one is going right now. Uh, I do know it's it's pretty far away. Uh, it might even be out of the country, but I'm not sure. The guy sounded like he wasn't from around here, so we'll see. Uh, I'll, I'll update you in another video where the Girl Pop uh, tribute went. But So, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get my label printed and take those to UPS. Uh, thanks again for watching and uh, stay tuned again there's more stuff coming more guitar videos uh, more reviews of things that I have that are going up for sale things that are are up for sale like I said we got nine eight or nine amplifiers to review yet and put up for sale and it, it's just gonna keep going I'm gonna let you go because now I'm just talking and talking thanks for watching